Welcome to the Chai Center. Welcome back to the Chai Academy. I know it's uh, it's been it's been a uh, it's been a little <laughs> it's, it's been some time. That's uh, holidays happened and had to regroup, but we're back. So the Chai Academy is a is a daily class a few times a week exactly the same time on Facebook and it is a the the, the, the idea is to teach is to teach um, the idea is to is, is to to teach various concepts now it's it's um, we, we run the gamut in different courses different classes etc um, and we've taught about famous personalities, uh, modern day Israel. We gave a course on Shabbat and on kosher, etc. To, to the um, the class today, and the course today, it's a new course that we're beginning, um, is a class on on Jewish ethics and beliefs. Jewish ethics and beliefs, and um, and we're going to go through some fundamentals. So I would say this is a pretty fundamental class. And um, it is a, it, it's, it should be an interesting course. At any time, I believe you can comment, and um, and I will try and respond. And if um, if I don't respond right away, I, I should be able to respond when I'm done. So the the um, Jewish ethics and beliefs. There's something that a word that many people or most people are familiar with and that is the word mitzvah so mitzvah is colloquially translated as good deed however that's just the way we translate it you know do a mitzvah do a good deed it the real translation of mitzvah or alternate um, I'm not sure. Give me a second. Lenny, I'm on. I'm on. Um, the alternate, the alternate um, translation is commandment. That these are mitzvahs. These are commandments that God gave, and He gave to the to you know to to, to be kept. It's a commandment. Now there's a very big difference between good deed and commandment, but we'll get to that in a minute. There's another interpretation or translation of the word mitzvah, and that is connection. So let's start with that one. So good deed, commandment, we'll, we'll, we'll table for a moment, but let's start with connection. Connection implies that we have the ability to connect with somebody. When, when we get married, we connect somebody. We connect, we connect with a spouse. When we have friends, we have a connection. When we, when we have children, there's a connection. So the question is, how does a finite human being connect? Connect with the, with the, with the infinite. Right? We're mortal. We're finite. Our, 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 we have limited intellectual capabilities. How is it possible for us to connect with, with the infinite? And the answer to that is by doing God's will. Will, a person's will, is a person's essence, what they want. God tells us clearly what he wants and what he doesn't want for that matter. God says we need to um, you know, not gossip so we don't gossip. We need to help the poor, we help the poor. That's how we connect. There's no other way for us to properly connect without doing God's will because, because we're finite. So when we do God's will, that actually is the connection. That's God's love language, is by doing his bidding, doing his wish, doing his want. And that's how we connect. So when we do a mitzvah, which is the 613 of them in the, in the, in the Bible, in the Torah, when we do a mitzvah, what we're doing is we're connecting. That is the idea, connecting. And, um, and once again, it's, it's sort of the only way that we can. Now, let's go to the other translation, good deed. Good deed 
is that we do good deed. It's a nice, it's a voluntary act. We're doing a mitzvah. Come on, help me. It's a mitzvah. Oh, you did such a mitzvah, etc. And that's a feel good, is good type of response. Commandment is we're commanded to do this. Got no choice in the matter. Commanded. I command you to do X, Y, and Z. So commandment is 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 just that is is um is a commandment. Um, so we, we, um, we do the commandment because we're commanded to do it. And, and that is very different than, than, that is very different than connection. That is very different than, 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 than a good deed. What's greater? What is greater? Is it, is it greater to, to do something voluntarily as, as in, um, say a mitzvah, or is it is it greater to 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 do something that you're commanded to do? Which one's greater? Which one? And um, and that's discussed now. Western society, Western society says, look, if you do something without being asked, that's incredible. Your kid makes the bed, and he makes the bed without you telling him or her to, that's fantastic. If your kid takes their, 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 their leftovers, their plate, their dirty plate, and puts it in the sink or puts it in the dishwasher or washes it, whatever, that is phenomenal. That is incredible. You didn't ask him to do it. If you have to, and, and you can actually have a, a thing, why do I always have to ask you? Why do I always have to ask you? If they don't do it and you tell them to do it so which one's greater so western society says it's much better when they do it without being asked you're being asked to step up to the plate and you do step up to the plate without being asked you step up to the plate without being asked that's incredible uh, i just think of the high center there are, there there are I, there's donations that i ask i actually have to ask in order to receive to keep this place going and then there's donations that people give their own good heart without waiting to be asked that's that's phenomenal that's phenomenal but that's western society viewing judaism from within judaism we have a completely completely different take being commanded to do something in judaism it's much better than doing it voluntarily. That God tells you to do something. It's like you're honoring the king. You do something without being asked to do, um, then it's up to your own volition. It's up to your own logic. It's up to your own um, view of that, view of such. Doing it because we're commanded to do it is, sir, yes, sir. This is the direct order from God. You know, and this is this is the reason, by the way, Abraham waited until God told him to circumcise himself. He could have circumcised himself earlier. Uh, he was a prophet. But you only get one chance at circumcision. So he said, let me wait till I get the order rather than me do it myself. So let me wait because it's much greater. And that's how Judaism views it. And, 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 and I think we can explain it this way. The, the, um, when, when, a, um, when I go on a diet, right? Go on a diet and, and I, I want to lose weight or I want to be physically, uh, you know, aesthetically more pleasing. I want to be healthier. I want to, whatever, whatever reason I have for going on a diet. Now, going on a diet is extremely difficult. And it's, it's, and you quickly, if you know, you have to be on guard the whole time. And, and many people make resolutions. Most people for that matter, I would say make resolutions, um, present company included, myself included for sure, and go on a diet. And the first day, 
I could be tempted by something that's not <laughs> it's not dietetic. Right? And if it's not the first day, it's the second day. If it's not the second day, it's the third day, right? Um so so um it it, it is it is it, it it is is a voluntary thing. And therefore it's very wishy washy. Let's take God's diet. Let's take the concept of, of, of kosher. Right? So for me, so me for me, however, however tempting this thing looks, I'm not gonna nothing's gonna happen. I'm not going to, I'm not going to um, be, be tempted by something not kosher, right? I'm not, I'm j just not, not going to happen because it's not a voluntary diet. For me, this is God's diet. And, and so therefore, if there's, if there's, if there's something that's, that's, that's not kosher, I won't touch it. If there's something that's kosher and fattening, there's a good chance I will. Very good chance I will. One is voluntary, and one is not voluntary. One is a commandment. Um, I, I can give you, I can give you hi sagi. I can give you a a um, another another example of voluntary versus commandment. Money. The IRS says you have to pay your taxes. And your taxes are X and X amount of percentage. And it's difficult. It's difficult. And the IRS says, okay, you, you know, you, you, you have to do X, Y, and Z. And, and, um, and you do it, and it's difficult. And many people cheat. Many people, they, they, you know, they, they get creative with their tax returns. However, charity, which is God's version of taxing, is a minimum of 10%. You cannot give less than 10%. And that's biblical. And that's what we do. We can give as much as 20%, 30%, whatever, you know, it depends. Uh, um, but 10% but, but is, is a minimum. So for me, I have a much harder time paying taxes than I do giving charity. Charity is God's command. The, the taxes is the IRS command. I do it, but but one I feel connected and 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 I feel I'm doing a great thing. The other one I sort of resent. Come on, you know what? You know what? Why am I doing this? Because the IRS, because they can't control their spending. Yada yada yada. Ten percent to charity is is nothing to do with controlling your spending. This is God's command. So so I I think I think the point is clear that that doing something voluntary is great, but then it's left to us. Now it makes sense, tomorrow it doesn't make sense. The next day it makes sense again, and the day after it doesn't make sense. Having a commandment, it doesn't matter whether it makes sense. It doesn't matter whether you agree with it or not. If you're committed to fulfilling God's will, you do it. Now these 613 mitzvahs, are they rituals? Or are they ethics? What are they? And the answer is they can be a little bit of both. Right? They split into two, really. There's one relationship between us and God, and the other one is interpersonal relationships. Right? Um, between us and God, God wants us to to um, pray to God. That's 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 a ritual. God wants us to put on to fill in. That's a ritual. God wants us to light the Shabbat candles. That's a ritual. God wants us to visit the sick. That already is involved with other people. That would be considered a, 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 an ethic. Visit the sick. Give charity. These are ethics because it's not just God involved. Now you're talking about someone else. Don't put a stumbling block in front of the blind. Don't give bad advice. That's ethics. It's a mitzvah in the Torah, just like sanctifying Shabbat. But 
one is involves someone else. Now, the, the, now some of these rituals can be ethical as well. Right? Some of them can be ethical. You know, what somebody once told me that you know I, I know the six hundred and thirteen mitzvahs of the Torah, but I don't really keep them. I don't keep any. I said, yes, you do. They said, no, you don't. I said, you do. He says, tell me how I keep a mitzvah of the Torah. So I said to her, have you slept with your father today? So she goes, of course not. I said, that's a mitzvah. So the 613, and by the way, these days we don't have 613. In the times of the temple, we had 613. When we lived in Israel, we have six, but currently, you know, no temples, we have no sacrifices. No sacrifices. We don't live in Israel, we have no tithing. We don't have any coin. We don't have any offerings. We don't have any first fruits offering. According to the Chavetz Chaim, we have less than 300. There's 300 instead of 613. 300. And not all of them are rituals, many of them. Are ethics and some rituals also ethics take kosher for example I'm not talking about I'm talking about the actual eating of meat it has to be slaughtered first Let's take slaughter aspect of kosher is a ritual yeah it's a ritual of course it's a ritual you make a blessing and you and you, and you uh, have to do it in a certain way and there's very very uh, you know uh, profound laws etc um, but it's also ethical because the, you, you can't, it's, hunting is not, is not ethical. Hunting is the animal suffers for a long time. You shoot it and then you run and, and you get to it and shoot it again, etc. Uh, you know, it's gross. Ritual slaughter is, is, it has to happen in one fluid motion. It's a ritual, but it's also ethical, right? That's ethical. Um, and, and, um, so there's, there's an example of both. There's an example of both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's, it's much of the Torah makes sense from a human perspective. The parts of the Torah that don't make sense and it's strictly a godly perspective, that's real ritual. And that we do because it's a commandment. And we do because it's a connection, as aforementioned. It's not necessarily a good deed, but it's something that we do anyway. So there are 613 biblical commandments at its peak. The rabbis have added another seven, but these seven are um, not proper additions. They enhance the mitzvah, um, or they're a gift to God. So, for example, we're about the, the holiday of Hanukkah, that we're, you know, which is in about a month, or less than a month for that matter. About a month, actually. The holiday of Hanukkah is a gift from us to God. Yes, there are many rituals, but they're rabbinical. Nowhere is it in the Torah about Hanukkah. It's a gift to God. Washing our hands before we eat that it's a rabbinical, but it enhances it. So your hands are clean and they're ritually pure. Um, Purim, it's another rabbinical holiday. So the 613 biblical ones, most, most we don't keep. Um, more than half we don't keep, as we said earlier. And, and the, seven, the seven rabbinical ones, and they enhance our connection to God. Um, wearing it sits it, the fringes is, is a ritual, and it makes sense. Not mixing meat and milk is a ritual that doesn't make sense. Who cares? Who cares? So I'm allowed to meat, I'm allowed to mix a vegetable with an egg. I'm allowed to mix milk with an egg. I'm allowed to mix meat with an egg. I'm not allowed to mix a hamburger, a, a cheese bar. Can't do that. Why? I can eat them separately. I just can't mix them. Why? That's something 
that belongs in the God's domain. It has nothing to do with health. Because take kosher. Kosher is not healthy. Kosher is not all about health food. If kosher was all about health food, it, it would be strictly tofu. And, 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 and cucumbers and, and uh, I, I don't know, oats. It's not. You get potato coke. Potato coke is not healthy. It's, it's, it's potatoes. I mean, there's no such thing as unhealthy food if you, if you, you know, everything in moderation. Um, you know, in, in, in the eating disorder world, you can't use the word junk food. There's no such thing as junk food. Food is food. Um, but, but, yeah, it's, it's nothing to do with health. So why, why do we have kosher? Because God said. Why can't we mix meat and milk? Because God said. So, and that is our ritual. But it's our Jewish ethic as well, not to violate the ritual. Um, to recap, mitzvah is a good deed, it's a commandment, it's a connection, and it's much better to be, to be told to do a mitzvah than just to do it on our own because we're fickle. Whereas when God tells us to do it, it's, 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 it's steadfast. You know, I, I can give you by there another example. I took, when my kids were younger, I took them into a 7-Eleven, you know, and they pointed to something that wasn't kosher. I don't, I don't know what it was. It was some type of candy bar that wasn't kosher or some type of, I think it must have been, it must have been a candy. And it wasn't kosher. It didn't have a, um, a kosher endorsement. It didn't have the OU, the, M, the OK, the MK, whatever it was. They did it, the Star K, Half Moon K. It didn't have it. It didn't have this. And I said, it's not kosher. Sorry, you can't have it. They stopped. They never asked me for that again. But then they caught an eye on a Twizzler. Twizzler is kosher. And I said, no, you gotta eat dinner. They didn't let up because they knew kosher is not negotiable. But dinner, dad, mom's not here, it is negotiable. And, and, and that's why commandment is so, so important. This concludes our first of ethics and beliefs. Tomorrow, please God, we'll, we'll, um, we'll, we'll meet again. Please feel free to tell, please feel obligated, you're commanded to tell your friends to join us every day. And if, you, if they miss it, or if you have to miss, by all means, it will be on the Chai Center website, thechaicenter.com forward slash academy. Um, we're back and we have to build our our base again but please god that will happen in a uh you know it will happen in quickly but please feel free to share the word god bless